Do you have a little one who's got a cough or a bit of a cold? Maybe their breathing seems a bit off and you're worried. I've got three kids, we do worry, don't we? Well, lots of parents feel this, especially whilst there's a virus called RSV going around. RSV is a super common virus that in babies can lead to a condition called bronchiolitis. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through what RSV and bronchiolitis are, what the signs to look out for, and most importantly, when to worry and seek some help. So I am Dr. Sophie. Keep watching, we'll go through this together to make sure you know how to handle this at home and keep your baby or your child safe. So what is RSV? It's worth just knowing a little bit about RSV. So it stands for Respiratory Syncytial Virus. We like to give things long names so we sound really clever. And this is such a common virus, in fact by the age of two nearly all of us will have been infected by it at some point. So be reassured this is mild for most. But it's worth just bearing in mind this video I'm going to go through when it can be a little bit more worrying, which it can sometimes be for younger children, older adults or those with an underlying health condition. So when we're infected by RSV, it doesn't just stay in the nose and the throat, it actually travels down into the lungs and can cause inflammation of the small airways, which makes it difficult for the air to get in and out. Now, babies already have such tiny airways that this is when it can become problematic and lead to bronchiolitis. Bronchiolitis is so common that around one in three babies in the UK under 12 months will have bronchiolitis at some point, and only about three in 100 will require some hospital treatment, so it certainly is mild for most. Adults aren't usually too unwell with RSV. You probably had it and just didn't even realize that, that it was that. It just would have been a bit of a cough or a cold. But for more vulnerable adults, including those over 65 or with pre-existing health conditions, it can lead to pneumonia. In this video, I'm gonna focus on bronchiolitis. So let's dive in, find out what to expect, when to worry, and how to manage at home. So what are the symptoms of RSV? Well, typically we diagnose it from the symptoms actually rather than investigations. You can get a swab for RSV, which maybe they'll do in hospital, but as GPs, we go off symptoms. And we tend to think of it as a 10 day illness. So it is worth bearing in mind how long your baby has been unwell. So typically they might start with a runny nose, bit of a cough, maybe a mild high temperature. And then by about days three to five, they do get a bit worse. So you might notice that they've had some difficulty with their breathing. They might develop a wheeze. You might see that their nostrils are flaring and maybe even sucking in between their ribs. Their breathing might be faster and they might be irritable. And you probably notice that their feeds are reduced compared to normal. And then by about day six, they start to improve, hooray! <laughs> and then by day 10, they tend to be pretty much back to normal, although that cough can continue for about four weeks. How to manage at home? Well, thankfully, most children will get better by themselves. They just need some extra TLC from you. Um, because it's a virus, antibiotics don't help and inhalers don't do much either. Um, paracetamol, so things like Calpol, can be useful if they are a bit distressed with it. Um, but don't use this just to try and bring the temperature down. And also avoid kind of trying to sponge them down or remove all their clothes to bring their temperature down as well. So try not to do that. Um, ibuprofen is an option if they're older than three months old. Just make sure you're reading the instructions and, and the dosing. Uh, from the pharmacy, you can get nasal saline drops. They can be really useful when your child is really struggling with that bunged up nose. Um, also, it's a good idea to try and give them more regular, smaller feeds if they're babies or in an older child, just make sure they're having extra water to keep them really well hydrated. And just ask to make sure that nobody is smoking around the, your child as well. So when should you call for an appointment with a GP? Well, if you are worried that they are unwell or getting worse or unusually tired and irritable, then we are happy to see them and check them out. But there are a few other things I want you to be aware of to get them booked in, okay? So if you have a baby who's too breathless to feed and you might notice they're having less than half of their normal feeds or they've not had a wet nappy for more than 12 hours. If they're under three months, if they've got a temperature of over 38 degrees C or over three months and a temperature of over 39 degrees C. If you haven't got a thermometer, you might just notice that they are more sweaty and hot than normal or perhaps shivering. So those things, please get an appointment with your GP. When should you seek emergency help? So unfortunately, some babies do need to go into hospital, usually just for a little bit of help with their feeding or their breathing, and it's often just a short stay until they're back on the mend. But it's really important you know what symptoms to look out for to get this emergency help. Okay, you paying attention? Right, so if you notice their skin, their lips, or their tongue are blue, um, on darker skin, this may be more visible on the palms of their hands. If it looks like they're having difficulty breathing, and so they're sucking in between their ribs, they may have pauses in their breathing, and they may be making a grunting noise. If they are floppy, you can't wake them up or they're very difficult to stay awake. 
or if they're over five years old and they actually have a low temperature, so below 36 degrees C, all those things, please seek emergency help as soon as you can. So who is more at risk? As I've mentioned, RSV can be more serious in the very young or those with previous health conditions. So do take extra caution and seek review early if your baby's under three months old, was born prematurely, has an existing heart or lung condition or a lowered immune system. How do you prevent RSV? Well, wouldn't it be lovely if we could prevent it altogether? That is unlikely. So what we can do is actually take the learnings we had from COVID because like COVID, RSV spreads through coughs and sneezes and on surfaces. So keep your hands and your surfaces clean, cough and sneeze into a tissue and throw it away, wash your hands and keep babies away from people who've got any kind of cough, cold, flu symptoms. And um, there is also a vaccine now available on the NHS for pregnant women, which helps protect the baby, or if you are aged between 75 and 79 years old. So um, speak to your maternity services or your GP about that. And for very vulnerable babies, they may be offered a preventative treatment to stop them getting bronchiolitis. And this will be offered from their paediatrician. So in conclusion, I hope this has helped ease some of the worries you may have had about RSV and bronchiolitis. And if you have found it useful, please consider sharing it with any other parents or caregivers. And if you haven't already, then do have a look at the rest of the videos on Dr. Sophie GP. I've got over a hundred videos on there now. As a GP, I like to share as much information as I can that you guys are going to find really useful. It's all free. You can trust it. It's great family medicine advice. Thank you so much for watching and take care of yourself.